How's it going guys? My name is Dom and today I'm going to be showing you a different technique to assigning properties to an object in JavaScript. Now you might be thinking, why can't I just use, you know, object.property equals this? Well, you might be right there, but there is a much more sophisticated and customizable way to add properties to an object. These include things like read only properties, setters and getters, as well as many more. Now, as you'll see in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to do those three things that I just mentioned, but I encourage you to read the MDN documentation linked down below to learn some more. Okay, let me show you three examples of using the define property function in JavaScript, all right? Now, right here, I've got this object called game, and this simply represents the current state of an in-progress game. So pretend you're building a JavaScript game. Now, we're gonna be adding a few more properties to this object using define property, in addition to the existing status and score history. All right, now the first property to add is going to be a max players. So in our case here, we're gonna say the maximum amount of players who can play this game is gonna be two. And using define property, we can make it so once that value is set, it cannot be changed. Okay, so down here, we're gonna say object.define property, and we're gonna be passing through here a couple of arguments. The first one is gonna be the object to define the property on. In this case here, it's gonna be game. The second one is gonna be the property name. In this case, gonna be max players. And the third one is gonna be a list of attributes in an object form for this new property, okay? We're gonna say here, value equal to two. So this line of code right here, or this, uh, these three lines is equivalent to just saying game.maxplayers equal to two. Okay, it's the exact same thing, mostly, right? Now, how do we make it so I can't change that value once it's defined? Let's hop down here and we'll say writable equal to false. I can no longer overwrite this max plays property. Okay? So now, if I was to say game.maxplayers equal to two, then I say console.log game.maxplayers. I'll run this script and we get here two. Now, my mistake, <laughs> I just set it to two. What I meant was something different, like five as an example, okay? Let's try again. And this time we still get two. So even though I set it to be five, we still get two. And that's due to this writable property. If I make this true as writable, do it again, we get five. So that's the first example uh, defining a read-only uh, property, okay? Next up, we've got a getter. Okay, now when I say getter, I'm basically referring to uh, a convenient way to uh, get some data from your object. Okay, now in this case here, we have this list of scores, a score history. Now, I want to find out what the highest score is in this score history without defining a new property to keep track of that score as it gets added into it. So let's do this using a getter. And this right here is super convenient, all right? We'll say object.define property. Once again, game, gonna call this one high score. And inside the attributes, we're gonna simply define one property called get, okay? This right here is actually gonna be a function. So you can see here I've used the, uh, you know, uh, brackets here. So it's gonna be a function. Now, whatever I return from this function, that is gonna be the value of the high score property. If I say return 10, and then I console.log game.high score, we're gonna see 10. I'll run this script again, and we get 10. So whatever gets returned here, that is gonna be your value for high score. Now, the most amazing thing about this is that this is ran whenever you try to access this high score property, which means it can update. Let me show you what I mean, right? So let's actually make this do what it's supposed to do. I'm gonna return math.max. Now, math.max is gonna take in a bunch of arguments 
and then it's going to tell us what the maximum value is out of all of those arguments. If I also say two, five, and eight, this right here is gonna return a single integer eight. But I'm gonna instead pass in the array. So I'll say spread syntax to convert the array into, uh, uh, into arguments. And the array is of course going to be this dot score history. Because when I say this, it refers to the game object because of course I passed in the game object. So this is the same thing as just saying game in this case. So game dot score history, give me the max number inside the score history. In this case here it's gonna be eight. Let's hop down here. And of course we get eight right there, perfect, okay? Now, I'm gonna say under this line, game.scorehistory.push, uh, I'm gonna add the value of 26. I'm now going to log out the high score again, and now we get 26 as the second log because I changed the array after um, I called it the first time. So I'm just demonstrating there that this right here is going to run whenever you access that property during the access time. So it's super handy for creating convenience uh, properties just like high score um, as you go throughout your uh, application development. Cool, so moving forward now to the last example, it's gonna be a setter. We just saw the getter, now let's see the setter. This works in a very similar fashion. In this case here, I want to define a setter called completed. I'm gonna say game.completed equal to true. Now in this instance here, this is simply going to add the completed property to the game and make that equal to true. But I want this line of code to instead update the status to the correct status of completed, just like this, instead of the in progress string. So hopping down here, I'll say object.define property and I'll say here game, it's gonna be called completed. And now, just like the getter, this isn't actually defining a property called completed. Well, it, it is, but that property isn't your traditional property like these two. Instead, it's a function which runs. Now, this function is gonna be set. It's gonna take in an argument. It's gonna be the value of whatever you set this to be to. So if I say here, once I've set this defined property to completed, right? So if I've set this property called completed, is what I meant, then I'll say game.completed equal to true. This is gonna run this function and the V, the value is gonna be true. If I make this value 34, V is gonna be 34. So essentially inside this setter, I'm not even gonna worry about a property called completed. I'm just gonna update the status. Okay, so I'll say this.status equal to completed, just like this. So now, whenever I try to set the completed property, it's gonna update the status to be completed. Let's see it in action. So I'll say console.log uh, game.status. I'll run the script and we get completed because this right here just ran, okay? Unfortunately, if I was to say completed equal to uh, false instead, so one line false, it's still going to make it completed because of course I've got no logic here which says look, only make it completed when I say true. So let's add this in. I'm gonna say look, if V is true, so if you said true here, then you update the status to be completed. Not, not when it's false, right? So I'll try again and now we can see it stays in the existing status of in progress. If I was to say true now, of course that if statement's gonna run and we now get completed. So you can add your own logic inside there. Let's just finish off uh, this if statement or this setter by simply saying, look, you know what? If you're trying to set it to be true, completed, and the status is currently completed, so you're trying to essentially re-complete the game, and then we're gonna throw an error. We'll say throw, uh, throw new error, and we'll say uh, game is already completed, just like that. So you can add your own error handling into the setter, 
just like this. So now I'll say, once again, run the script, that's fine. If I try to set that property twice, so down here, we can see now we get an error and it says the game is already completed. So you can see there, you've got uh, these three popular ways to use the find property. But like I said earlier, there are many more things you can do with this. And I encourage you to uh, read the MDN documentation. And that is all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed that one and you learned something. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. And as per usual, if you're interested, you can check out my Udemy courses linked down below. My most recent course was a JavaScript DOM crash course, perfect for those beginner to intermediate developers wanting to learn the JavaScript DOM. And that is all. I'll see you in the next video.